So I'm Celine Greis. I'm a first year master student at the McMaster University in Canada. And uh, this was my summer research project, but it now turns into my master thesis. I'm very excited to present um, my modeling on like on molecular gas susceptibility to rum pressure stripping in urban cluster galaxies. And what motivates my research project um, is that there are different environments in our universe that we have um, positions or we have locations where there are higher densities of galaxies and lower densities and in those higher density um, galaxy clusters, um, we have different environmental effects that drive the evolution of the galaxies within it. And one, like there's been done a lot of research on like how environments drive, um, um, affect galaxy evolution and one key driver is RAM pressure stripping. And um, the way you like the way I think about RAM pressure stripping in my project is just like this constant wind that a galaxy experiences when it moves through the intercluster medium of a galaxy cluster, which you can see on the right. You see this galaxy is at a velocity b. And um, in the past, there has been a lot like there has been done a lot of research on RAM pressure stripping and how it affects the gas of a galaxy. And most of it has been done on um, H1, so the atomic hydrogen. And you can see on the right side, for example, in this plot, the profiles of um, at atomic and molecular hydrogen, and they have very different profiles. So molecular hydrogen is far denser and more like centered around the center of a galaxy um, and then drops compared to um, atomic hydrogen, which is seen like more volume filling, more homogeneous. Um, and um, and less like has less substructures. And that's kind of where my project jumps in. Um, you can see on the left side, um, a galaxy of the Virgo cluster and it's H2 mapped on top of um, its stellar emission or its visual emission. Um, and you can see that molecular gas is clumped. Um, it has like the substructure, it's, it's dense and so on. And um, we, in my research project, we, we are wondering um, in what way Thus, is then the molecular gas affected in room pressure stripping because it's thought that atomic gas is like kind of ex like experience homogeneous over the whole disk, uh, a similar room pressure stripping, and then it's removed homogeneously. And we are wondering um, where is the molecular gas of a galaxy affected and how much of it is affected. And that's now like possible to take this fine structures into account because we have high resolution ALMA data, part of the FANG survey. And um, yeah, that's what my project is about. Um, so back back to the the sketch I made. Um, we have our galaxy, our disk, and currently we assume that it it um, moves perpendicular, like that the full disk experience kind of uh, um, this wind uh, when moving through the intercluster medium. And when we zoom into the disk, you can you can you can assume there's a molecular gas cloud in blue. And the, since the disk is moving down, it will experience this run pressure upwards. This is indicated with the arrows. But at the same time, since you have mass, since you have stars and so on, there's a restoring pressure that tries to pull the cloud back down. And this idea, or this model, is also already used by Roberts um, at all. And we want to use it now as well, but with data um, from Alma. Thanks. Um, and so we say, um, in this project that the gas is susceptible to run pressure stripping if this if the run pressure just exceeds the restoring pressure. So that's the basic idea. Um, and the way we model the run pressures, we assume uh, just a Gaussian of like stellar distribution in the disk. And then uh, we say that the stellar mass is dominant because I said at the beginning, the molecular gas is more centered um, yeah, in the center of a galaxy, and there we can say that the stellar mass dominates and we don't have to take into consideration the dark matter. Um, and so in our model, there's like there's the surface density of the stellar mass that goes into to it. We got this from Vertigo, which is also a, a survey of the Virgo cluster of 50 galaxies. Um, but combined with the vice data, so we have stellar maps. And then the for the molecular gas density here, we use FANG's um, high resolution CO data and we just use a conversion factor to get the molecular gas from the CO data. Um, and then the run pressure, 
um, is is the, the formula is simple. It's just the density of the intercluster medium and the velocity the galaxy moves within it. But the, the issue is that um, to get the density, you need the distance from the from the galaxy to the center of the cluster. And as my supervisor, Chris Wilson, always says, distances are hard. Um, so we have to use the projected distance and we do kind of a pi half to take into account that it's that we don't have we don't have the information about the th third di dimension, and the same thing goes for um, the velocity. We just have the um, radial velocity, so we assume it's like isotropic; it moves in all direction. That's why the factor of three. Um, so there are some assumptions going into our model, um, but then it's what I explained in the um, at the beginning. We we map we calculate the RAM pressure for the whole galaxy. It's the same for the whole galaxy. And then we use the molecular gas data from FANGS that we have um, the restoring pressure at every point of a galaxy. So here's an example how this can look like. Um, so you see in our galaxy, uh, NGC 4689, um, we uh, divided the restoring force or restoring pressure. I use that you can extend, you can, ex can use both pressure or force. Um, the restoring pressure divided by the run pressure. So whenever you see something red, that means the gas is not susceptible to run pressure strapping. And whenever it's blue, it is. Um, I just want to make this clear, blue is susceptible, red not. And this, this galaxy looks a bit boring and there's not much happening in terms of run pressure. Um, but very luckily, um, we found three galaxies that look very promising and really cool. Um, and they all, First of all, I'll go through them like except like individually, but all of them show this um the structure of that the molecular gas determines kind of where it's stripped. Um and you can, yeah, but I will I'll go step by step through them. So first of all, we have NGC 4254. Um and a cool thing also about these galaxies is all of them have different gas properties. So this galaxy is very, very rich in atomic and molecular hydrogen. Um, and it's it has a H1 tail, and those H1 tails are usually usually a sign that is currently in a process of falling into a cluster. Um, and you can see on the right again um, that the outer parts are susceptible from our model. And you can also see here down that the molecular gas is kind of yeah, of course, due to our model determining um, where it's more resistant, where we have more clumped molecular gas. Um, and we found for this galaxy that is 13% of its molecular gas would be susceptible. Um, then we have NGC 4548. It's a very um, gas poor galaxy, both deficient in H1 and H2. Um, and you can see it just holds on to its gas um, where there's something left here. Um, and it's interesting that we like we found it. 20% of its molecular gas would be susceptible, I guess, because just the gas density, the molecular gas density is so low at this point, because it has been stripped before. And maybe it's now in the process of being like having a second infall. Um, and then there's NGC 4569. And this one is this one is also cool because it's known as this a smoking gun gun, which is a term for a galaxy that's currently undergoing run pressure stripping. And what's Typical for this, these galaxies is that they are usually H1 deficient, but they still have quite some molecular gas. Um, and yeah, here again, you can see that the structure of the molecular gas determines its resistance. Um, so that's kind of what we did. Like that, that that's so now we got like for ten, for a sample of ten galaxies. Um, currently, we got the um, the how much of the gas is susceptible. And we wanted to combine this on um, with the work that's been done by Sable um, at all. They looked at those Virgo cluster galaxies, so our 10 galaxies as well, and they determined how deficient they are in H1 and H2. And they made this diagram. So you can see in this diagram in the, in the left bottom corner, there, are there will be galaxies that are super gas rich, and in the right top, they're deficient. So high deficiency means, of course, there's not much gas left of that type. And I plotted now um, our, our galaxies in there, and um, it's color marked with like how susceptible they are to run pressure stripping. And um, what you can see, they all line up a little bit 
here. And then the, the three ones that we found that are quite susceptible, they, they fall, fall off of this, um, this trend. And um, yet we only have 10 galaxies. We have these assumptions that go into, so we can't yet say that this is a, a real trend. So we want to extend our sample and see um, if we can continue seeing kind of this differentiation between um, maybe there's a, because Sable et al, they found that there's no, not a direct correlation between H1 deficiency and H2 deficiency. And they said most likely because of environmental effects and one pressure stripping could be one of them that maybe changes the, the, the deficiency, how they, how they ratio to each other, I guess. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's something I'm looking forward to see if maybe we can find something or not. And the basis of like, how we want to extend our sample is that currently we we used like fangs we used the fangs data and we we used vertical um, stellar maps and um, fangs has not like they don't only focus on um, Virgo cluster galaxies so the overlap of those two surveys were only the, these ten galaxies um, but vertical has also molecular gas mass um, mass um, maps but they are in a lower resolution. Um, so we were looking at how the high and low resolution FANGS data compares to each other. And you can see here the one, um, one arc second compared to 7.5 arc second resolution. And we again calculated how much gas is susceptible and the results overlapped. And that gave us, gave us kind of the green light that we now want to extend. We want to do our analysis with the lower resolution vertical data. Um, yeah, and that's that's kind of future work. Um, I'm excited for that. And that's, that's actually already what, um, what I wanted to present today. You can see in my summary um, that, again, the basic idea of, um, of our model that we compare ramp pressure and restoring pressure. You can see how we modeled it. And those three galaxies out of 10 um, showed like uh, a, a significant amount of um, its molecular gas being susceptible to ramp pressure stripping. Yeah, I'm, I'm done a little bit early, but I hope it's okay.